Uh, I must say, uh, like the other speaker here, I don't have a real job either, because I just follow my ideas, and I'm an entrepreneur. And I follow my ideas, and I do what I like to do. I don't fit into regular jobs. Uh, I'm going to share with you today one of my ideas, uh, which I'm working very passionate now, uh, which is positioning data and how we could use positioning data in our lives. So, people, as you know, the world is mapped. Just about everything is measured. But there are dark holes. There are dark holes within buildings. Within buildings, GPS and maps doesn't work. And we're building more and more large and complex buildings. We're building more labyrinths. We're building more mazes. Imagine Sinne here. She's a first year student at the University of Trondheim, Antinu. She's just moved from Oslo. She has no friends. And during the first week, she'll have to visit 15 different places around the campus. And the campus is huge. It's got 350,000 square meters, 60 buildings, and 13,000 rooms. Do you think it's hard for Sina to find her way around? Yes, it is. And Sina is not the only one. At Antinu, each year there arrive 5,000 new students, and they all have the same problem. And this is not an unique situation. We have the same thing here. And I read that here in um, uh, Hamburg you have around 7,000 new students arriving each year. So we wanted to help Sinna and other students like Sinna finding their way around campus. And in 2009, we had a vision that every student, every employee, every visitor should be able to have indoor maps on their own device and should be able to have their own position as well, whatever kind of device they had. Either it was a smartphone, tablet, or a laptop. And to solve this great challenge, we had two major problems. First, we had to find a way to position people indoors. Because as you know, GPS doesn't work indoors. We find a technique using existing Wi-Fi infrastructure, and a technique called tree laturation, which is almost the same as you do with GPS, except for GPS, it's with satellites. The second grand challenge was how to utilize existing maps. Because when you have 350,000 square meters of maps, it's pretty dumb hard to draw up all manually. It's too costly. I don't know how many of you are used to reading maps like the one up in the corner. Any at all? Oh, one, two. Oh, great. A few. Uh, but they're not very user friendly. Uh, so what I did, uh, I pulled off a trick, uh, which I've used several times before. I put my best engineers, my best developers, into doing a routine job. I said to them, here's 350,000 square meters of floor plans. I want them done. I want them manually drawn. Of course, what I got back was a way to do it all automated. So now we can recognize stairs, steps, we can recognize doors, windows, and etc. And we can style them up in a unique way, so it's actually friendly to the users going to use the application. So, in 2011, uh, we launched uh, the application called the Campus Guide at the University of Antinu. Uh, and it actually had all 13,000 rooms searchable. So you could search for a room, you could find your own position within the building, and you would get a route from where you are to what you search for. Um, and as you can see, uh, it wasn't a very nice application. Actually, we had a budget for design, but we had to cut costs. And so it was either an application without design or no application at all. Of course, we choose the later one. Uh, but um, we started off, 
uh, and in August uh, 2011, uh, we launched the application. And I was thinking to myself, will this ever be used? Within the first year, we got the response from the users. And it peaked for around 1,000 unique users a day. 1,000 unique users a day may not seem too much to you, but if I tell you that there are, in total, 10,000 students and employees at campus, it means that 10% of all people at campus use the application daily. That is a lot. So, why was it used? Well, it certainly was a nice application. It didn't get you rich and famous. So why? Well, it did the job. It helped the users find their way around campus. Of course, with the success, you got money. Like all startups, you got loads of money. Uh, you could do design, you could do new features, you could do, well, a lot more than you could when you don't have money. Uh, so we did that, uh, and we launched a new brand uh, last week, uh, and we got the team settled up. But pretty early, we also got a call from the hospital in Trondheim, Santulavs Hospital, uh, which is the university hospital, and the regional hospital for 600,000, no, 700,000 patients. And they just built a new hospital. So as you can see in the middle of the picture here, it's a huge area, and it's complex. It's hard to find your ways. And I think it's approximately 250,000 square meters. And when they first called us, I remember they were saying, patients actually meet up a day in advance just to find out where they're going. So I was saying, what? I was amazed. So, so people actually come the day in advance, find out where they're going the next day, go home and come back the next day. Well, this is 2013 people, so I, I got an idea. Here we can do something. Here we can make an impact. So this is how it should look like. You get a notice of appointment electronically in whatever device you have chosen, SMS, email, or whatever. You got all the information you need right there. The time and, of course, directions of where to go. So you could check out where to go from your home at your laptop or when you come to you know, uh, the, the hospital area. And when you come to the hospital area, you could get turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the same phone. This is how it should be done. And this was actually launched Thursday last week uh, and, uh, nationally, and we were all over media. Uh, but what made my day was when we were meeting, uh, we are doing a, a film setup uh, for a um, uh, national broadcaster, and we were meeting with a, I would say, elderly lady in the 50s, best 50s. And she has been lost so many times. And when I showed her the application, she just lit up. She was so amazed. And she would go right home and download it straight away. This was a lady in the 50s. So then I knew it would be perfect. I knew it would be have a great launch. And we did. So uh, now I showed you that indoor positioning data can be used to find your ways around in complex buildings, but they can also be used to a lot of other stuff. Here you see positioning data from a building owner's perspective. And the dots you see here are all positions. So if you're a building owner, you can see the position of all devices that have Wi-Fi turned on. So this is taken from NTNU, but if installed here at Leishalle, I could actually see where all of you are. And I guess some of you are thinking, well, I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, maybe the rest of you is thinking, so I could actually see where my husband is at the late hours. Well, I have an important clarification. We can only see depersonalized information. So we could see there are people here, how many you are, but you, we can't see who you are. So that is important. 
Um, but this is important data if analyzed and used correctly. And how? Let me give you a few examples. First, let's jump back to the university case. Uh, we've been talking to a lot of universities, and they all have the same problem. They're short on teaching uh, uh, areas. They're short on lecture halls, especially Monday to Tuesday. Friday? No, that's not a problem. <laughs> uh, so what we did uh, together with Antinu, we're now developing a solution where you could count the number of persons in a lecture hall. Because what's actually happening is that you see that a lecture room is reserved, either by a teacher or someone else. And a lot of the, um, what you call, lectures are either cancelled or moved to a larger or smaller room. But the reservation is not cancelled. So it looks like it's busy in the booking table. No one else can use it, but it's actually free. And this problem we'll be solving uh, with Antinu. And together with new initiatives, we're hoping to save, hopefully, around 5,000 square meters a year. And that equals 1 million euros a year in rent. Let's take another example. Um, this is from shopping mall. So if I'm a shopping mall owner, I would want to know how you move how my guests move, if there are any obstacles. Uh, I would also like to know what are the most popular locations. Because I get my income from renting out places to stores. What are the most popular locations? Now, there's a tool that helps you do that. And my last example is from public transports. And Trondheim is a, uh, a student city, and students make up around 25% of the inhabitants of, of Trondheim. And during Christmas and during summer, they're gone. They're in different cities. Uh, but they come back. And the bus company is telling us, we never know when they come back. We never know the day, and we never know the time. So, but all of a sudden, they're there. And the coaches are crowded. And they're asking, could you help us with this problem? Yes, we can. We can count the number of persons waiting on a bus stop. We can give this information to the bus company so they'll send the right amount of buses. This could be used also for large traffic hubs. Um, the owners of traffic hubs could see how traffic hubs are used and make them more efficient and better for us travelers. And I can think of a dozen ways to utilize this kind of positioning data. Think of architects. Architects can now actually see how the buildings are actually used, not how they're planned used, so they can learn for the future. And if I were talking to each one, Every one of you, I'm sure, will find a lot of examples on how this will affect you. Today, there are a few companies working with this. Um, I only know of 10, 20 or something. In five to 10 years, there will be dozens of companies and there will be hundreds of services helping your life. Because we're now at the starting of a revolution. We're at the start of a revolution in how positioning data can make your life easier can make businesses' life easier on organizations and cities. And I'm sure that positioning data in 10 years will be as important in your daily lives as search is today. Thank you.